Okay, so this is the start of my Volkswagen T5 conversion story. My uh, T5 uh, appears in all of my videos from um, what I can recall. Um, it's a great thing to have as obviously my bike fits in perfectly without having to strip it down. Um, that's a real bonus whenever you go anywhere, just get out straight on the bike. Um, this is the finished, well, as it is in its current state anyway, um, lots of stickers everywhere, which is a bit of a thing for me. There's the sub. Um, it's got great cupboard space um, in it. Um, you'll see how the cupboards came together and uh, the rock and roll bed and all of the other um, uh, bits that uh, make it up um, throughout the, the rest of this video. Oh yeah, there's some more stickers. Got a bit of a problem with stickers as you can tell. Ah, look at that, a Calibra sticker. Thank you very much um, for sending me the stickers. Dan, who was uh, at the bike show where the stickers came from. So, um, yeah. Yeah, interior at the front it didn't look like that when I bought it you'll see that as the the video goes on bit of a bonnet bra at the front bit of a fashion thing no I don't think it actually does anything but um, just makes it look a bit less like a, a works van um, a bit of lighting that I put in as well so and um, that's the sort of finished um, article um, as it stands back in August 2014 and um, that's when I bought the van um, this was the very first day that I bought it. I spent about, from what I remember, about five grand on it. My, my kids looked absolutely tiny there. Um, they, they look like men nowadays, four years on from there. Um, it went straight to Volkswagen Busworks in Whitchurch um, for the windows to be fitted. Um, so I didn't even bring it home. I just took it, um, took it straight there. And uh, the uh, guy from Volkswagen Busworks sent me this picture um, of the windows fitted so yeah when I got it back home and where I was living at the time and that's the, um, the the finished article in terms of the windows being fitted I think what I spent about um, 220 pounds on the windows being fitted um, this is the interior of the van uh, as it was at the time um, it had belonged to prior to my own in it um, a kite surfing company so it had spent a lot of time on the beach there you go lots of uh, um, wooden panels inside it was a very pretty basic um, van uh, my old motorbike that's my old um, Triumph Street Triple outside where I used to live um, and yeah, there's loads of um, sort of phone accessories and stuff in it like old school phone accessories so those all needed um, ripping out and oh yeah look at Soundgarden playing on the um, radio there one of my all-time favorites this photo yeah all of this stuff I managed to rescue from down the dash in, including a spare key and a dog chew and all that sort of stuff and um, those stickers all over the van inside um, originally so they all needed um, stripping out I can see there's an ion uh, sticker there so yeah, I use ion knee protection now so um, yeah loads of insulation um, that was inside um, the van as well one of, one of the issues about it being owned by a kite surfing company was the fact that um, salt water had seemed to get into some of the um, the areas that was one of the speakers that I could see had been um, badly damaged by um, salt water and corrosion so um, one of the first things that I needed to do was to get the um, the stereo um, sorted the speakers were um, pretty useless anyway so um, I yeah I don't use Halfords but in this instance I used Halfords they sorted out all of the speakers and tweeters and um, uh, it was just an awful lot easy to get somebody to, to do it for me I hate taking panels off um, and trying to get them back on without damaging them but um, fair dues I wouldn't allow Halfords to build me a bike but I will allow them to um, fit some speakers in my van so yeah I was, I was um, pretty happy with that got some decent um, speakers so the sound system is really good in there um, now you'll see obviously you've seen already seen the sub in there so it's a bit of a bit of a beast of a sound system um, the um, there were some really tatty Volkswagen logos on the wheels and um, that wouldn't do so I got these ones ordered they were 6.99 nice and tidy and um, there's a uh, picture there of, of them being fitted um, onto the existing um, caps so I think the wheels were originally from um, a an older um, BMW um, uh, so yeah that was a uh, 
Um, I can't remember exactly what version, um, but yeah, but issues with the electrics there, the rear light was on, um, this part of the um, the rear door was missing, um, this was the damaged bit of uh, um, that was making the rear light stay on, so I needed to get some bits. I kept, used TPS um, for anybody that uses Volkswagen stuff, for TP, a lot, lots of little bits and pieces came from um, TPS, so these two parts, they never seemed to cost me very much because I was buying things for the T5 gradually over a long period of time, um, and eventually um, all the bits and pieces came together and um, once the um, parts here have been replaced on the rear, rear door um, you can see here that the, um, the electrical fault had actually um, been removed so I was well happy with that. This was the where the rear view mirror um, would go in a, in a van and the, the cap was missing so I put a post out on uh, the, one of the forums and asked um, where you could get them from and somebody just came and put one through my door asked my, asked my address and um, this strip was missing um, as well when I bought it so um, a trip to TPS as usual to to get a replacement I think this, this part was actually quite expensive I think I spent about 12 quid in TPS that counter um, I saw a lot of that counter during the conversion um, the next task then was around insulation and I spent a lot of time making sure the insulation was was absolutely um, sound on this van so we started to collect some bits and pieces and um, for that oh yeah there's the um, the finished strip on there which uh, actually in the end um, got covered which you'll see in a later video door handles um, yeah they were pretty tatty to be honest so they needed replacing um, fairly quickly and usual um, uh, trick was to try and source something off eBay every um, for some reason every door handle was um, really tatty um, on all three sliding doors so these came off eBay they just uh, stick onto the existing doors and they've held up really solidly they look as good today as the day that um, that I put them on to be honest so yeah I was um, really happy with that purchase you can see they look uh, an awful lot better than the um, existing uh, very tired looking um, handles on there so that was a, an important um, you know aesthetic part of the um, the improvements and you can see that the the van is starting to um, take a little bit of shape anyway and um, this is the um, uh, where the um, tweeter covers are that was really badly um, corroded so I gave that a good clean up and I rescued then um, the sub from my old Volkswagen Beetle yeah I know that's terrible wiring but um, I needed to um, bodge something together um, so this was um, part of my own work not Halfords this time I um, wanted to, to fit the sub so um, the only way to um, fit a sub obviously is to get the um, the cable um, right the way through to the, the battery so I needed to go through the bulkhead and um, there's a, a, a pre-existing hole in the bulkhead there to get the, um, the cables through and yeah quite happy it uh, man managed to get it through myself without any difficulties and um, fed the cables all the way through and uh, got the sub fitted there um, and it's uh, stayed in the van ever since well happy uh, I think I did um, manage to kill the battery while I was um, fitting it though so I managed to um, to, to fit that and then um, yeah a nice sunny day there with a with a rainbow to um, uh, win one of the, the first journeys that I did and as you can see there, the um, the, the, the tyres are um, fitted and um, hubcaps are on. Um, however, one of the issues that I did have was the um, the wheels um, had a, a bit of an issue, and the um, the well, that's an insulation picture there. I'll come to that next. And um, there's the rusty um, seat cover. And um, while I was driving along, the the wheels uh, when I got to about 60 miles an hour were rattling a bit, and uh, I needed spigot rings, as you can see in the picture there. Spigot rings basically help the wheel mount to the hub um, of a, a different size, and they weren't fitted on there. So um, that was a, a really important job. I think it cost me oh, what was it, about five or six quid for the spigot rings, maybe even less. And you can see there that's the spigot ring fitted inside the. Um, the, the wheel itself. Um, wheels back on 
and yeah the rattling completely stopped i thought it was going to be a really bad um well more really expensive fix but i took it to um i thought i thought it was an odd shaped or an egg shaped tire that i'd got on that was making it rattle but um, i was told when i took it into um, a tire place that the um, spigot rings were missing and obviously without the spigot rings the um, wheels won't center properly so that was a, a really important job back to the rusty um chair well, of the, the driver's seat anyway um really badly corroded as you can see because of the fact that uh, it had spent a lot of time being sat um, in a, a wetsuit and um, so that needed stripping out. So it's really important to remove the seat. You'll see in a couple of pictures time that the seat was really badly corroded. It was an absolute pain to get out because the seat bolts had got quite corroded as well. So I remember leaving the um, the bolts soaking in WD-40 overnight but yeah that got it sorted in the end and I was uh, happy to get the seat out and um, again there's the picture of the, the the damaged seat it really needed quite a lot of work to get that back to um, sort of um, factory standard um, it took uh, um, a, a lot of sanding a lot of spraying and um, that's the start of the sanding process and um, really got it down to quite a good finish in the end. The, um, the, the seat itself um, took uh, um, loads and loads of work to, to get it back to um, how it should be. I think a lot of, a lot of grinding, a lot of, a lot of sanding. Um, it was a right mess, wasn't it? I'd forgotten how bad it was really. So this is the, the start of the, um, the spraying process. Um, got lots of, um, uh, of the um, newspaper to protect the seat itself and um, I didn't uh, couldn't remove it there's the the undercoat going on and then the next stage was to get the um, the mats well sort of a satin black finish on it so that was the um, an important part of the the job quite happy it looks all right doesn't it and um, compared to, to how it was so it needed to go back into the the van so that was the the next job um, the the, the um, um, seat itself was a was a bit of a, a wrestling match to get it back in, but all the plastics um, went back on, and there it is back in the back in the van, looking um, almost as good as new. Managed to get some uh, pretty cheap seat covers as well. Again, this was another eBay purchase, about twenty quid. And again, they took a bit of bit of fitting, um, but uh, they're all right. And um, they've lasted all this time, so they've, they've they've been pretty good quality. So the next mission really was to get the van insulated and completely stripped out, soundproofed, um, all of that stuff. And I remember um, my partner Helen and I doing this over. Um, a whole of the sort of winter period, November 2014 to um, probably January 2015. Um, the wooden panels all came out and um, this is where the, the real hard work um, began. As you can see, um, it was, uh, 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 you know, it really was completely stripped down to, to bare metal. You can see here what sort of a state the van was in, um, in terms of the um, insulation that was underneath the, the wooden boards. Um, I reckon there was probably about three ton of sand in there at the time because of the, the kite surfing. So a lot of work was involved in just, just getting the, the, the van back to a, a state where you could um, work on it. Um, there's the, the boards were actually in the van already, so that wasn't uh, too bad. So um, put some decent insulation on the bottom of the, um, the, the boarding um, that was in there already. And I was quite fortunate there um, to, to have some of the, um, the, the boards already in. Um, I had a really nosy old neighbour at the time who always came and slowed me down. I probably would have finished the van in about 10 days if it wasn't for him. The um, um, it, soundproofing, that was like um, flashing from Wix. So it's roof flashing. And I saw that tip um, on the internet. You um, cut the strips off. Um, stick it on and it uh, it really did work it wasn't cheap that was about 10 pounds a roll I probably spent about 20 quid on soundproofing maybe just a little bit more to get all the big panels soundproofed but yeah that was um that was I was well happy with that in the end that was a, a good tip um, that I discovered
So this is the start of the insulation process. I just used um, radiator insulation for the vast majority of the these panels and um, silver insulation tape. All of this stuff came from Wix, I remember. Um, and uh, I think I made a reasonable um, job of it. There's me um, really taking my time to insulate the, the doors and um, make sure that um, I'm doing the best possible job that I can. Um, the next image here is um, starting to see you know, the insulation coming together. Loads of work involved in getting the van insulated, but it's paid off. And then I was very fortunate that um, my friend Chris who was uh, um, did a, a, a big job on his house and he, he needed to get rid of some insulation so um, he, uh, he gave me a load of insulation so I didn't have to buy any more after that point. He'd, um, he'd insulated his loft and everything and, and had all that uh, stuff um, left over so um, yeah there's some more soundproofing on the, the back doors. I think I probably went and bought some more soundproofing and um, you can see the back door starting to come together pretty nicely there. Um, this image um, I think is the um, sliding door that was um, stripped out and um, that insulation, oh no, so actually there's some um, soundproofing that, um, that went in and then um, the rear um, quarter panels as well that um, all got stripped out. Um, here is some of the, the insulation going in. So, you know, it's, it's one of those jobs that takes probably the longest on the van in total, really, of all, all the jobs I've done. But it's um, paid dividends in terms of um, the van being um, really quiet to, to drive. And also um, it's uh, uh, great when you're sleeping in it as well. It uh, actually stays very warm. So the roof was done as well. And also um, you can see here right the way to the, the front cab was, was done as well. I didn't actually do the cabin um, itself because ripping that out would have been um, pretty hard work. So the um, insulation was done. The wooden panels went back in and um, you can tell that the it was it was winter at this point there was um, still quite a lot of um, glue and gunk around the um, rear window um, I don't know what it was from but that took me forever to, to get off so I was pretty pleased to to get all that sorted and then the van went off to back to Volkswagen bus works where the van um, what went originally for its windows to be fitted and uh, I was really pleased to get the van lined professionally and um, there's no way I could have done as good a job as this um, some of the pictures are a bit dodgy because I remember taking these ones at night but you'll get a, um, a better idea of what the um, the pictures look like in a, in a couple of um, couple of pictures time where the um, the um, pictures are, are taken in the day they did a really really good job um, at Volkswagen bus works really happy with the way that it um, it turned out you'll see in the the next um, the next slide here that blue bit sticking out at the bottom is where the jack fits the jack was originally just dumped under the the chairs and they asked me whether i wanted to to keep that and uh, i didn't even know what the where it um, what the jack stand was for you can see they've done a really good job haven't they well well happy with that it was really really nice and tidy um, i couldn't have done a, a good as job as that not in a million years it's a it's a real skill and a real craft i think to to be able to um, to do that so the van really started to come together at this point so yeah this is a just a little bit more of the um, the rear lining well happy with that and on to the next job the next job was to get some flooring in so this was just like normal um, like vinyl from a, a carpet place that I, I worked nearby dead uh, dead easy job to do um, for some reason that had always been missing this is the the rear door um, locking mechanism so I think that cost me about two pound fifty three quid from um, TPS again um, great to get these little jobs finished the the rear section of the the vinyl left quite a hard edge so I purchased some of this uh, um, aluminium door strip um, that again I think was from Wix and just tidied up that uh, that rear section there so yeah I was well happy with that um, one of the problems that remained really was the fact that the um, the 
the step from the side door is at a different height so I knew that was something I was going to need to do to get a, a rear step um, uh, with a, a thicker thicker depth. Um, oh yeah there's the jack that I mentioned earlier so the jack actually just screws onto um, that, uh, that, that bit of um, metal that's exposed from underneath the, um, the lining so that's the, that's the rear sorted well happy with that it was a, um, a, a lot of work to get to that point and you can see from um, that image there that the the van really is starting to um, look more like a, um, a camper van ready to be converted rather than the um, the rusty um, kite surfers van that I started off with um, the sub one of the most important things and um, you saw a bit of this um, uh, image earlier and I didn't comment on it but um, the nosy neighbor that um, I referred to um, his um, um, wife's wheelchair used to go around on this and he had no use for it anymore so he gave it to me and uh, he, he just said you can have that so yeah of course I'll take it tidied up the cables on the sub and I saw this thing on eBay about using a heat gun to try and restore your um, bumpers back to black you can see I did half and half there and um, these are the flat pack rear cupboards and they came from MG design and got them um, delivered to my workplace and basically they came as flat MDF panels that needed completely assembling it was the cheapest possible way that I could think of getting the, um, the rear um, cupboards in again a lot of work was involved in um, building painting and getting these cupboards up to a, um, a reasonable standard and um, there um, they were a bit of a pain I have to say to put together and um, not the easiest thing in in the world there was some some of the wood sort of needed bending so I had to use some um, straps there to get the um, the glue to all sort of hold together and we'd moved house by this point as well so I'd got a garage and a bit more space and uh, yeah so there's the sort of bends in the the wood needing to be held together using the um the straps mechanism um that's the uh the cupboard for the the rear very rear section and sort of dry fitted into the um the van at that point but it's all starting to, to come together I uh, had to um, I think it came with hinges no no it didn't come with hinges actually there was no hinges supplied so I um, had to um, get some um, cupboard hinges from what I recall and uh, that needed all screwing together um, loads of work involved in in, in this um, I think I probably was probably on the painting and um, assembly of the cupboards for, for a good um, week um, no um, handles came with the, the cupboard so that was basically you could um, you know it was left to your choice there was no holes pre-drilled or anything like that so um, I got these um, exterior ones I know a lot of people use the the push button ones so that they're flush but um, I quite like the look of these so I sealed the MDF with some MDF sealant um, unsurprisingly and then um, used a roller to apply um, some gloss black to the um, to the cupboards um, I wanted it um, black and grey that uh, was always the um, the plan for these cupboards so um, you can start to see the um, the work that was involved in, in getting these cupboards those are the doors I wanted the doors in grey with all the um, the um, hinges and all the assembly parts there um, so yeah everything had to be really um, you know had to leave it to dry for ages because um, the, the gloss paint um, took, took ages to, to dry so I think this is the actual um, fixing of the, the cupboards um, into the um, uh, into the van itself now and uh, this took quite a lot of doing um, I used some uh, L-shaped brackets um, there's nothing that came with the um, um, the cupboards themselves you know everything had to be sort of fitted um, directly but I made a really good job of, of getting the um, the cupboards um, fitted so then I went on to the doors the doors were painted again using a roller and um, uh, this is the point that I've at, I'm at now there is all the magnets are fitted for the doors and there you go that's the um, the doors fitted to the cupboards and um, that really does start to look like a, uh, a camper van now doesn't it it looks uh, so different to the original 
um, pictures that were um, at the, the very start of the video and um, the uh, cupboards I think look pretty good so I think that the cupboards cost me about 220 quid flat pack if I'd have gone and um, got some sort of bespoke ones uh, I reckon I'd probably be in would have been in at the time for about 700 quid that is a rock and roll bed so the rock and roll bed came from um, the uh, place in Wolverhampton and I think at the time it cost me about 550 quid um, for the for the rock and roll bed to be um, bought and they fitted it as well. Um, so it's crash tested and as you can probably tell it folds down flat um, into a bed as well and it's, it came fitted with seat belts. That's the, the picture of um, the um, from the rear of the van. Here's the step that I mentioned earlier. So the step that I'd got was a shallow step and I needed a, um, a raised step to cover that area. So that was about 35 quid from TPS again. And I think I spent an extra eight or nine quid on the, the light as well. So that really finished the, um, the job off. I was uh, happy to get that uh, step sorted. And there you go, there's a sort of um, complete before and, and after picture. Um, and coming towards the end of the video now, there was no, there's no vanity mirrors, so I got some cheap vanity mirrors that um, stuck onto the visors um, from eBay. And this is the, the very sort of uh, start of the, the camping expeditions because that was a drive away awning um, that we bought and um, that we used to use. Um, it needed a, an awning rail which is sort of stealthily fitted um, to the top. And then we had our very first camping adventure. There's the, the bike rack that um, you, uh, you saw earlier in the video. And we had our first trip to Cornwall, a very windy setup um, for our first camping trip, but the wind died down after a, a day or two. So you can see the, the, the drive away awning on the side of the van there. And um, the, the, it was fitted to the, um, fitted to the van. Um, really happy with the, the setup. So that sort of begins to, to conclude um, the end of this video. Um, if there are any comments or questions, um, please do um, leave them in the um, comments box below. Um, a lot of work was involved. Um, a fair bit of money but um, a little bit of the time you know over the period of about seven or eight months and uh, we got this um, fantastic camping setup if you do like the video please like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one